favorite spot for Israeli hang gliders. What would happen if they were enemy planes? This is not a hypothetical question. During the painful years in Israel's history when the Syrian army was positioned on the Golan Heights, artillery, tank, and sniper attacks were part of daily reality. This is how Israelis saw the Golan until 1967. And this is how Syrians saw Israel. Massive Syrian forces dominated the Israelis below and fired at civilians and farmers at will. This cannon is a grim reminder of the Syrians' overwhelming military advantage until the 1967 Six-Day War. A simple machine gun like this was fired with deadly accuracy at Kibbutz Ein Gev, only a few hundred yards below the Syrian positions. Joel Scheinfeld lives in Far Harul, where the heights rise sharply. Even now, the violent days of the past are uppermost in his mind. This point was the center of the Syrian Southern Command from the period from 1948 to 1967. Today, my children live in the children's houses here on the kibbutz in the same place where there was once the Syrian army camp. The feeling of security here is much better for us today than the fact that the children of En Gev, who slept in bomb shelters from 1948 to 1967, from the bombing that they received from Kfar Haruf at that time. But the fact that we're here, instead of being down in the valley below, presents Israel with the opportunity to look into Damascus and not let the Syrians look down into our homes. When the Syrians controlled the Golan, they were able to dominate the entire width of northern Israel, all the way to the Mediterranean Sea. is the strategic advantage offered by the Golan Heights. Northern Israel, dominated by the Golan, includes the Hula and Jordan Valleys, Israel's breadbasket. Only a few hundred yards from former Syrian positions. The Sea of Galilee is even closer, and the Syrians posed a constant threat to tourists, fishermen, and residents of the entire Tiberias area. From the heights of the northern Golan, the Syrians were able to fire at will on Kibbutzim and Moshevim in the Galilee, as well as on thousands of civilians living in such northern towns as Tzfat and Kiryat Shmona. They were within range of vital industrial centers. The Syrians also posed a constant threat to more distant regions, including the city of Haifa, which boasts Israel's largest seaport and industrial area. But you saw in the Gulf War that no matter how many uh, bombs were dropped from the air and how many missiles were launched at the Iraqi army, without ground action, you cannot win a war. And that's where the importance of the Golan Heights comes in. Uh, it is a fact that the biggest army that we're facing is the Syrian army. And if they have that crucial piece of land, on top of, our, uh, of the Galilee, then they can penetrate with ground forces. And if we sit on top of that high ground, then it becomes a lot tougher for them. This field at Kibbutz Tel Katsir was only 200 yards from the Syrian positions. This is an actual sketch made by a Syrian soldier during an artillery bombardment. And these are the devastating results. In 
1967 six-day war, Israel responded to a Syrian attack and captured the Golan Heights. A 19-year-long nightmare came to an end. For the first time in their lives, the residents of Kibbutz Tel Katsir and the Galilee discovered the meaning of security. Today, bomb shelters have become playgrounds for children who do not remember why they were built or needed. Instead of threatening death, the Golan Heights now ensure Israel's security. They are a strategic necessity. In northern Israel, leading a normal life is no longer impossible. While most of the Golan Heights range between 1,800 and 2,700 feet high, the northernmost part reaches an altitude of 6,000 feet, by far the highest place in Israel. I think the fact that we are on top allows us not only to safeguard the peace, but to do so with minimal forces. People commonly talk of a ratio of 1 to 10. Well, we could have one and they could have ten, but the fact that we're sitting on the high ground on a level playing field allows us, in fact, to uh, protect Israel with minimal forces. The 482 square miles of the Golan Heights comprise a very small area, 44 miles long, 15 miles wide. Small enough to fit into the state of Texas 553 times. Less than half the size of America's smallest state, Rhode Island. Each of the Golan's three sectors, north, center, and south, has its own strategic relevance. It is only nine miles wide, but the southern sector is surrounded by natural obstacles impassable to modern armies. This sector is mostly flat, but its strategic importance lies in the Rukad Valley. In order to bypass the valley, an invading army must detour to the northeast. This is what happened during Syria's surprise attack against Israel in the 1973 Yom Kippur War. Hundreds of burnt out Syrian tanks still litter the area, attesting to its strategic value. The central sector of the Golan has many hills, which enable the monitoring of Syrian forces. These hills, rising from the plateau, today face the main concentration of the Syrian army, comprising some 800,000 soldiers and 4,000 tanks. The Israeli outposts here are the major obstacle to a potential Syrian attack. If you sit on top of the tell and the armor is coming at you, you can see it, you can fire at it, you can stop the thrust. And therefore, these specific hills, or tells, are a crucial element in Israel's defense line. The overwhelming significance of the hills is that they form a buffer zone where a surprise Syrian attack can be halted. There is no doubt that in order to defend um, Israel from a sudden attack from Syria, as it was in the 73 war, we have to maintain a military presence on the Golan Heights. Military forces on the Golan Heights should be part of Israel's defense on the northern part of the country. The northern part of the Golan is particularly important in providing strategic early warning. The observation station situated on the chain of volcanic hills can provide advance warning of enemy attack. Mount Hermon, the highest point in the sector, commands a wide view for gathering vital information deep inside Syria. Undetected against the glare of the rising sun, Syrian tanks and planes can advance from the east. Electronic intelligence gathering systems are therefore all the more important. Sophisticated electronic devices here watch and listen to everything happening across the border. This is why Mount Hermon has been nicknamed Israel's eyes and ears. the 
Golan Heights in less than 40 seconds. Early warning is critical. The longer that uh, alert is, the more time we gain in order to mobilize our reserve forces and dispatch them to the Golan Heights. Because, uh, as it's well known, Israel's defense is based on the reserve forces. The Golan Heights also command the main sources of Israel's fresh water supply. This bridge marked the Israeli-Syrian border until 1967. The Jordan River flows under it to the Sea of Galilee. This is Israel's main source of fresh water. From the Sea of Galilee, water is siphoned off by massive pumps. The water is then channeled via the National Water Carrier to all parts of the country, as far as south as the Negev Desert. Its inhabitants are totally dependent upon Galilee water. Guaranteed water supply depends on the flow of the Jordan River and its tributaries, the Banyas, Hatsbani, and Don Rivers. The Banyas and the Hatsbani were controlled by the Syrians when they held the Golan Heights. This is where the two rivers join, forming the River Jordan. In the arid Middle East, water is the essence of life without which Israel could not survive. Water is like blood. You cannot let any danger to this source of water, which is our national reservoir. Syrian presence on this heights in front of us is dangerous because the possibility of diverting the water or polluting the water or make any other damage to this source of water. In 1964, the Syrians did indeed try to divert the waters of the Banyas and the Hatsbani away from the Jordan, away from the people of Israel. In the Six-Day War, Israel put a stop to this. Today, the diversion channel remains proof of Syria's intentions. The Sea of Galilee, which right below us here from Kvacharu, is our only fresh water supply. For me and my family and my friends, we don't have any other options for water except from this lake. To us, it's a matter of life and death. Living here on the Golan means that we can control our life. The Golan Heights controls uh, so much of our water supplies, and I don't think uh, we're just about ready to hand it over to Syria, who will decide whether we drink or not drink. Israel really wants uh, to live in peace, not to rest in peace, and the Golan Heights makes a big difference. A new era is dawning in the Middle East, one that may succeed in tearing down the barbed wire fences. A real and lasting peace can be achieved, but Israel's security cannot be compromised.